Join me right now on Kumite TV is undefeated Bellator featherweight title challenger, Olga Rubin. How are you doing, Olga? I'm really good. Really good. Extremely busy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know I'm catching you before you have to go pick up your son. I wanted to ask you about your son. You know, he's he's only a few years old. What kind of motivation is that, your son, you know? Because you're going into this title fight and you began your pro career when your son was an infant, right? So it's just like, what's that motivation like for you right now? Um, it's extremely driving. Like, it, it's my biggest drive right now to like be able to show my son in a couple of years that I could reach my own goals. Like, so can he, basically. But yeah, he's my big, biggest fan and motivation. Your Bellator career started in 2016, and it's almost been about three years, I think. Did you envision it the whole time like this? Did you kind of have it planned out like this? Well, definitely not. Um, I didn't know where the career was about to take me. You know, um, it seems to be really surreal to me that I've worked my ass off for two and a half years, of, of course, but uh, still to have a title shot after six fights, I was I was in like cloud nine, really. I was so like extremely happy to get that opportunity and the platform, of course. Throughout those four fights with the promotion, you know, what was a moment that you felt like that elevated you, elevated your confidence to this level where you can go and chase after the title? After the Cindy Dandwa fight, for, for sure. After proving myself and all the people did not believe in me that I could get in the cage with one of the best featherweights and dominate her. So uh, it kind of gave me the motivation. Also, my coach, Brett Pickett, he kind of told me, like, you don't believe in yourself uh, at all. And after that fight, like, I really hope you do believe in yourself now. So uh, that was uh, that was it, probably. Speaking of uh, Brad Pickett, you know, you've been working with him for a little less than a year, I believe. And, you know, what has he done to your game? How has he transformed you into the fighter you are today? He gave me so much, uh, except the obvious skill skill set that I'm working with him so uh, so much on. Uh, also, the confidence I'm building myself, and the reassurance that if I work hard enough, I can reach my goals. If you know what I mean. Like, um, obviously, he had a ravishing career, you know, an amazing career, and I was a huge fan of him. So, everything that he uh, did, he can try to transform into me. Like, I'm I'm a sponge at the moment. I just I get so many different things. So uh, besides that, also this amazing confidence that I got right now that I can I can be there and I can be the champion. So basically, you got two in one. You have a coach and a mental coach because you know nowadays you see a lot of you know fighters going out and getting like hypnotists and and mind coaches, but you got two in one, so you're lucky. Well, yeah, is I won't even say a mind coach. You just He's the whole package, really. He's also my manager, so <laughs> I'm, I'm really fortunate I found him. And he's a great guy, so whenever I have problems, I have issues, and I need to like, sort it out, like, he's always there for me. Now, after Belter 217, how long after that was it when you found out about the title shot? Days. <laughs> Days, okay. Days, yeah. So did you jump right back into training, into training camp once you found out? Definitely. I haven't. Like after any fight, I haven't taken like more than three, four days off. I go immediately to work. So how has training camp been? Where have you been spending most of your time? I know you were in the UK for a while. Now you're back in Israel. So what was the the schedule like? Well, I'm kind of setting myself onto two different. Um, I won't say time zones, but I have two different. Places to be at. I have two weeks in the uh, UK and two weeks in Israel. I have a really cohesive team. What really works together to make me uh, a better fighter was Moshi Kedar coaching me in Israel and uh, making sure that Brad checking a work, uh, giving us notes, and we're all very cohesive. So um, I've been spending a lot of time in England and in Israel with my family as well. Definitely. Well, you know, for an elite fighter, I'm pretty sure finding that perfect blend, you know, to win fights is, I'm pretty sure you found it in what you have right now. Now, anything new you've implemented into your uh, training regimen? Oh, so much. Oh. I've been, I'm, I'm like a, I'm like an old dog, but I can learn your tricks all the time, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just, 
every time I learn something new, I'm like immediately trying to incorporate it in my game. So I'm I'm never the same fighter I was in my previous fight. So uh, and shit, loads of striking at the moment. So that's what I'm planning to do. You've mostly competed in Israel, and in your last fight, you went to Ireland and got a big win. You're heading stateside for the first time to main event Bellator 224. Was fighting in the U.S. something that you've always wanted to do? Oh, definitely. I've been dreaming of this, really. Like, th this is surreal to me. But also, like, I kind of earned it, you know? You definitely it took earned me it. A while. I, I fight in the States, I fight in the U.K., whatever they give me, I'll fight. Like, for sure. Does it almost feel like you're going into enemy territory? Nah, not necessarily. Mm. I did feel like that's in Ireland. <laughs> but, um... I don't feel like that. Like uh, American crowds are like amazing. So I don't why did see, you feel like that in know, Ireland? This was really interesting to me because I'm used to hearing my name shouted like in a really good way, right? So in Ireland, it didn't feel like this. But it was really um, like I knew it. I knew this is about to happen, so I wasn't really surprised. So when I hear the booing and the things, I was just smiling. I was like, "Yeah, I was prepared for it." Now let's talk about your opponent, the champion Julia Budd. Have you had any interactions with her in the past? Never, never, no interaction. So you don't, you have no, you know, because a lot of fighters they know each other, you know, even though they might not like each other, they have interactions with each other. So you've never met her, never talked with her, nothing. Zero interactions. Like I prior to the Cindy fight, we were constantly like texting each other, like trying to create, a, like make creative ways to uh, promote our fights without like you know any kind of uh, um, despicable behavior. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, like I haven't, I haven't met Julia or talked to her ever. You know, she is a a pioneer in in her own way. You know, what are your thoughts on her and how she represents women's MMA? She has done a great job so far. She has she has done she has fought everybody, like everybody who really uh, is interesting in that division except uh, Cyborg of, of course, but um, she has done a pretty pretty decent job. The problem is that she was not active, she wasn't really keeping track of uh, the division, and hopefully the division starts to like grow and grow and grow and so many different new names coming to Bellator, and I think we can actually make this division the greatest, potentially. You mentioned Cyborg. She has been saying that she might test free agency and she could possibly go over to Bellator and fight in the 145 division. What is a potential matchup with her, you know, a legend like her for you? Sure, that would be amazing. But technically, she has no division in the UFC. She can either go to Bellator and continue fighting MMA or WWE, whatever she wants to. But she she's like... A force to be reckoned with and if she moves to Bellator like this is gonna be a solid division really going back to your opponent you know in many people's eyes Julia she has become kind of a in a way an unbeatable force you know as a challenger do you embrace like this underdog role definitely I'm fully aware that I'm a complete underdog and I'm really comfortable in that position I proved people wrong a couple of times already I don't mind doing it again you know Ronda Rousey and Cyborg, you know, they both were knocked out when everybody thought that they could never lose. Are you planning to do the same to Julia Budd? No one is unbeatable. You can beat them all. It's just a matter of the right coaching, the right skill set, and obviously the drive. And I'm a hungry wolf climbing up the, the mountain. So I know she's going to bring her A game, but my A game is going to be extremely strong this time. All right, July 12th, Bellator 224, featherweight title is on the line. Olga, thank you so much for your time, and uh, good luck on your future. Sure, thank you so much.